So, hello everyone. This is Dr. Asnath from Pulse Pharma. I would like to take this new opportunity, which is presenting by Pulse Pharma, uh, in the form of podcast. So, we are now trying to inculcate new doctors and clinicians across specialties to talk about certain topics which we have gathered and to get the opinions about the same molecules for better clean patient and clinical outcomes. So with this, with this, I would just love to start this podcast with uh, Dr. Doshi, who are who is our first guest for this podcast sessions. So with this, I would have some formal duties in front of me for the introduction of Dr. Doshi. So Dr. Suyog Doshi is a, is a consultant physician and diabetologist. He is practicing since the last 28 years as, at Shastri Hospital, Zona Hospital and Neuron Hospital at Santa Cruz, Mumbai. He is an MD in general medicine, also a, a fellow of uh, Euro-Asian Academy of Cardiology, also a fellow of Euro-Asian Academy of Clinical Diabetology. He is the first physician from Mumbai to get both fellowship in cardiology and diabetology from Euro-Asian Academy, which was held in the Netherlands. So he has also completed a course for doctors at reputed Institute of IIM, IIM Ahmedabad in July 2024. So with this, I would love to welcome Dr. Suyog Doshi. So thank you, thank you very much. Yes, it's a sir. pleasure to be with you and uh, the new podcast program, definitely. Okay, sir. So, sir, today's topic is vitamin D in the space of cardiology. So, before starting ahead, sir, I would just love to hear a few words about vitamin D from your side, how you see this going forward and what was your experience with vitamin D right from your bachelor's day as we all have seen vitamin D just as a mere supplement during our bachelor's. But nowadays, it is becoming more of a therapy. So, how is the journey of vitamin D? Yeah, see, now I am in practice for almost three decades. Uh, we all know there are type of vitamin, fat soluble and water soluble. Water soluble being B and C and this A, D, E, K are fat soluble. Why they require storage in a fat environment and for obvious reasons. So now initially, I think last one and a half decade, the noise of vitamin D as a therapy has increased. Of course, previously it was very much well known for osteoporosis and all the Bone mm. building, you require vitamin D with calcium. But there was never any talk for last one and a half decade before that for using it as a therapy for neuropathy. Right now, you can name anything, cardiovascular disease, diabetology, everywhere we talk of supplement. But yes, when uh, this awareness was good because last uh, maybe one and a half to two decades, when we are estimating vitamin D, we are finding Indian population has much more deficiency than the Western counterpart. And mm. it could be definitely connected to all the disorders we are discussing as a therapy right now. Then. True. So, 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 so this is a great trend that uh, vitamin D deficiency is a uh, pandemic for India. So is this the right statement? Like it is a pandemic, should we consider this as a pandemic for Indian patients? Mm, I will not say pandemic. I would say awareness has increased. We, okay. If we are genetically prone for a deficiency, maybe... Our previous 30, 40 years, we have not diagnosed that and not treated that. And right mm. now we are possibly evaluating and treating the problem. True. So, sir, I would just now start with the, the questions that we have gathered from the clinicians about vitamin D. So, I would start with the very first question that what is the clinic, what is the percentage of vitamin D deficient patient that, that goes into or that comes to your clinic? At the first instance, so what is that percentage of patients that comes to you as vitamin D deficient? Now, vitamin D deficiency can be diagnosed either clinically or, of course, estimation. And last uh, two decades in my routine protocol of a routine test done for every patient, if required, along with TSH, vitamin D estimation goes hand to hand. And I can say we have detected deficiency in 30% of the patients I see on a particular week. So 25 okay. to 30 percent incidence, you can say. Yeah. 20 to 30. To, so, so considering the, uh, what you say, the studies, it is quite a large population, I should say. 20 to 30 is still comprises of a large population. Yeah. 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 So, so, so what population, is that? I think it yeah. will depend on the type of patients the doctor will see. Hmm. In, since we see chronic patients, we are estimating much more. Maybe a family physician point of view, he might estimate 5 percent. True. 
ट्रू 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 दैट इज ट्रू तो सब मूविंग ऑन टू आर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट इज वॉट इज दवरेज विटामिन डी लेवल दैट आर पेशेंट प्रेजेंट टू यू What is that average? Uh, it, average now we are clear that yeah, we are clear that the deficiencies I have seen ranging from five to fifteen, sometimes twenty nanogram per ml, but ten okay. to twenty is very much common. And not only atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in a general population, old age, osteoporosis, it's quite commonly seen. Even in young patients who have been working in the office hours for ages together, not exposed to sunlight, we could have a really low level. And when they come with a feeling of low. A hmm. feeling we do estimate vitamin D and find it very very low. Yeah, so 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 uh, I would now post some my personal uh, view on this. Uh, what is the main uh, reason why we why we as Indians are suffering so much of vitamin D deficiency, being in a tropical country like India? Now I think see most of the subcontinent uh, dietary factors are vegetarian. Vegetarian sources are very less and. If not supplemented adequately, definitely many deficiency are seen in vegetarian diet. So maybe it has to be with diet and the genetic predisposition of the Indian subcontinent. Oh, okay, I got it, sir. Now, sir, moving on, that we now know that people that comes to a clinic are vitamin D deficient. How should one treat vitamin D deficiency? Via supplement or uh, only sunlight is enough, or only food fortification is enough? How how you see this, sir? Going forward, no, all on three sunlight. Maybe we'll take care of twenty percent food supplementation by FA, maybe five to ten percent. But colic alciferol sixty units a standard dose weekly for eight to twelve weeks, and estimating after that ninety percent of the patients do achieve the target. So okay. I would go hand in hand with mm. all. Okay, so you you mean to say sixty thousand are you for eight to twelve weeks? Yeah, that is that is it the. Should, it should yeah. be adequate. There are some patients where I have mm. given a mm. injection of six lakh units followed by this mm. therapy. When the symptoms are very much obvious, that works more faster. Then. Yeah. So now just moving on to sir, uh, you rightly mentioned sixty thousand IU for eight to twelve weeks. Now what is that level that we are trying to achieve? Like from the uh, what you say from the Asian data, what we see is. 20 nanogram per ml then uh, some recent data say, says 30 nanogram per ml and now the evidences are emerging for 15 nanogram per ml so how you see this as a therapy or what is yeah, the level i would always be comfortable to achieve a level although in many patients because of financial reason we are not able to reestimate again just to determine the level but in mm -hmm. which patients who are really cautious want the level to be repeated 50 to mm -hmm. 60 nanogram is a acceptable level Because okay. if you don't supplement continuously later on, also it might fall back very fast. So it's okay. better to again evaluate after one year again. Okay, the fifty to sixty nanogram per ml. So, so is yeah. it a safe dose for Indian patients? Because this is, I think, one of the most common questions that a clinician comes across is that: Do we see hypervitaminosis at the, at this dose? Uh, not, not, not really. I mean, out of hundred, maybe. Occasionally, one patient could have, but I have not seen any one suffering from hypervitaminosis. But if you have been supplementing with the heavy dose for a long time, it could definitely. Okay, so yeah. so you mean to say only for eight to twelve weeks, uh, will do that the, yeah. that thing and to reach Then level your of normal vitamin yeah. D with your normal calcium supplement, a uh, lower dose of vitamin D, hmm. so maybe two thousand or thousand units per day should be okay. Okay, so to reach to a level of fifteen nanogram per ml. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, I would love to hear from you that a new regime is coming up into the market. That is a daily therapy of sixty thousand IU for you say for five days or for ten days. This is known as high dose short duration therapy to reach to yeah. a level faster than weekly therapy. So I I hope that you must have gone through some of the literature for the same. So what are your thoughts on this therapy? Very much. Sir? Very much. It is. This is a commonly asked question, and we have seen literature mentioning this. But as I just mentioned a few minutes back, we have been using a injectable dose since ages. Even since I was a student forty years back, uh, boss had taught us a six lakh unit of injectable therapy followed by oral. That time, sixty thousand unit therapy was not there. It mm. used to be followed with two thousand units every day. So okay. that is something like what this is a, a short duration high dose therapy. I think it should work and it should achieve the targets faster. 
so 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 just this this would just uh, click into my mind that why intramuscular injection and why not oral like there are certain papers that shows that oral gives you a faster uh, uh, yeah, ascent right of now, levels we yeah. no longer give injectable right now but i am talking of three or four decades back yes. when these data was not yes. there still we have been giving for osteoporosis patient a 6 lakh unit injectable followed by 2000 units every day true so, so maybe so, this is something similar so, so so you mean to say now it has been replaced with uh, oral therapy oral therapy yeah yeah it is more palatable more effective possibly so sir i would just now go to uh, as you rightly mentioned for the oral dosage form because now in the nowadays in the market there are a lot of oral dosage form be it your capsules granules oral solutions you have micellar solutions you have intramuscular injections so we will cut down intramuscular injection that we will focus about on uh, oral dosage so what what yeah. type of oral dosage do you prefer sir capsules granules or oral right solution now- there are many you know when vitamin d began in the market it came in a capsule form then it came in a disposable tablet or a chewable form but right now the most best oral and i have been always a fan of oral liquid prescriptions for my patient for palatability on better effect and a nano carrier entrapped vitamin d oral solution standard watch we give right now true is the okay. best way to increase and uh, best way to achieve the target okay so you mean to say oh, oral nano carrier entra vitamin d3 is the best that you try to achieve the level yeah. with so sir yeah. moving on to my next question from the uh, clinician point of view is basically do you prescribe any milk or any fat thing with to be taken with nano carrier entra vitamin d because since it's a fat soluble vitamin so it's a common myth that you should uh, uh supplement one or the other fat to get it better absorbed so do you prescribe any fat uh, along with nano carrier entra vitamin d3 solution theoretically it should work yes because vitamin d is a fat soluble vitamin absorption is through the lymphatic system True. so theoretically it will work but practically i don't think milk is necessary i usually don't i prefer to give it independent of food intake and i we achieve the targets with this with this uh, nano carrier entrap therapy should not be a problem okay so, so so what is so special about nano carrier entrap vitamin d3 i mean to say means is it because it is already a fat uh, solubilized thing so you don't need to give fat and the patient compliance yeah, increases with this and patient compliance better absorption is adequately stabilized and we have demonstrated after giving this for 6 to maybe 3 uh, months a uh, good okay. improvement and there are some clinicians who have a uh, trial where they have given with food or without food and the uh, levels have not uh, differed much oh i see i see thank you sir so uh, now i would uh, post another question that is do you prescribe so vitamin d in patients taking statins to prevent the statin induced myalgia or statin associated muscle symptoms and into that patient can, what is the optimal I say, level i would say not only vitamin d for statin myalgia there are other medications which are much more important but yes vitamin d supplementation to such patients as a pro prescription like ubiquinolone with vitamin d and mm. achieving a level around 50 nanogram will be better for optimal analgesic and anti inflammatory actions definitely okay i got it sir uh so moving on i think uh, we have the last question from the clinician point of view is basically we talk a lot about vitamin d in uh, ascvd but as per the data of vital trials it has been shown that vitamin d does not have any benefit over placebo so your thoughts on sir vital trials because it's a very important trial and it shows that vitamin d has no benefit over other placebos uh-huh. in ascvd yeah i was i have gone to details of the trial what was noteworthy was maybe most of the patients were already on vitamin d and they had already achieved a sufficient level and then the trial was started so that's mm-hmm. why they did not notice anything positive so it got reported as a negative result so maybe we need further data where the patient should be deficient and then uh, i think the data would be little bit different they okay. generated after that point of view then no so it's your personal experience with uh, vitamin d and acvd no definitely in every atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease now without fail we add three 
medications apart from the lifestyle. One is the SGLT2 inhibitor. Now, be it diabetic or be it non-diabetic, cardiac and uh, re renovascular benefits, uh, SGLT2 inhibitor with uh, vitamin D supplement in addition to the accessory medicine required for that is tailor-made for the patient will do a definite benefit and uh, I think future trials will demonstrate all these benefits. Okay, sir. I think uh, th this was all for today's session. So thank you, sir, for being a part of this and for addressing the queries of the clinicians. We'll meet again. So for that time, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Pleasure to be discussing with you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Bye.